Hey, thanks for joining Rudy and me. We're studying the book of Ezekiel and we're in chapter four. In yesterday's video, we ended by talking about the first three verses of chapter four where Ezekiel acted out a picture. So he drew a picture of Jerusalem on a brick and built siege walls against the king. If you've ever played a little army man when you were a kid, it's like he has his little army men out, except this is a horrible drama playing out. He put a he put a iron plate, which I uh, I interpret to be uh, God saying, "I'm going to be separate from helping you. I'm going to be apart." And then God told him in verse four, "Lie on your left side and place the guilt." Rudy, today I looked up the word in Hebrew for guilt. It's your word iniquity that you talk about so much. Place the guilt of the house of Israel upon it. You shall bear their guilt or iniquity for the number of days that you lie there. For I assigned you a number of days, 390 days, equal to the number of years of their guilt or iniquity. And you shall bear, here you get it, your word, your, the guilt or iniquity of the house of Israel. When you've completed these, you shall lie down a second time, but on your right side, and bear the guilt or iniquity of the house of Judah for 40 days I assign you, one day for each year. You shall set your face towards the siege of Jerusalem, and with your arm bared, you shall prophesy against it. I am putting cords on you, so you can't turn from side to side, other than you have completed the days of your siege. So Rudy, why don't you kind of dig into that for us? Well, like we were talking about a couple of days ago, that there is a image going on within this that is relevant to the time, but it's also a picture of what is to come and really what was as well. Uh, it's interesting that in Genesis, uh, when God basically shows Abraham the land and he tells him that I'm going to give you all of this land but I'm not going to give it to you for around 400 years uh, because the iniquity of the Amorite is incomplete. Right. And the Amorites are uh, a family from Ham that basically were the predominant people within the eastern, well, it's really, yeah, the eastern border of the Mediterranean Sea. And really, when you, when you go back, and this becomes important here as well to this time, when you go back and we see that Ham and Shem and Japhat, Japhat is kind of Europe, Shem is the Middle East and Asia, and Ham is Africa. Uh, it's kind of what's going on here. And uh, But the iniquity of the Amorite will not be complete for 400 years. Then we jump forward into Exodus, and we see on, that Israel was in captivity for 430 years. And that's exactly what's going on here. 390 and 40 is that 430. And then Paul reminds everybody in Galatians that Israel was in Egypt for 430 years. So this somehow is connected to the iniquity of Israel yeah. because somehow that's connected to the way God talks about the iniquity being the payment for iniquity. One more interesting thing. We, we pull forward a a little bit from Ezekiel's time, and then we come into Ezra and Nehemiah. And Ezra and Nehemiah are people that are about a hundred years in the future of Ezekiel, and they're the ones that, that God uses to bring the people back in the land. Well, lo and behold, they're 430 years before the Messiah comes. Mm -hmm. So when you see these things, you have to know that the one that is orchestrating them is outside of time. These exactly. are not coincidences. Yeah, and that, we're going to get to that. That's a very important point, the outside of time, that God's not part of that. 
I, I want to I want to zero in on the word. I just it, want one more thing. The the greatness of the King of the Universe becoming flesh. 430 years after Nehemiah and Ezra is the prize at the end of this suffering that we yeah. have to remember because we may be or someone we know may be in these hard times we have to remember the promises you yeah. well put as we read through Ezekiel we're going to get we're going to have some dark Boy. places hard places there's also some bright places. You just have to hang on and be patient. Uh, a thought about iniquity, because it's in here a lot. The, the word iniquity, A-W-O-E, and I can't pronounce it Hebrew. Can you, a won't? Whatever, doesn't matter. Uh, that word can be translated guilt or iniquity. Iniquity, I like to think of it as being twisted. Twisted on the inside in our thinking and in our behavior. Okay, and uh, we need to look at ourselves and say, Lord, how is my thinking twisted? How is my inside, my in inner self, how am I twisted on the inside? Probably all of us can look at places, I know I can, and, and say, my heart is not fully given to God. You know, I'm, I'm twisted, and so I, I, I like Paul said in Romans chapter 7, the things I want to do, the things I don't do. The things I don't want to do, the things I do. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this bondage of death? That's iniquity. So that's, that's part of it. But the other part is, there is a guilt of iniquity. So let's, let's keep that. God doesn't want us to stay there. He wants to set us free. And so uh, Jesus came to set us free, gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit to set us free. And we need to say, okay, God, you want me to be free? Show me how to get free. Help me to get free, all right? With that in mind, then I want to come down here to the idea that he was going to lie on his side. He didn't, he didn't stay on that one side 24-7. And so it could have been there was just a certain period of time each day he would go out and lie down before his bricks. Or it could be that he was there all day from sunrise to sunset and and he was there any way it goes that's a miserable job yeah i mean he he couldn't have been there 24 7 because he was the one making his own food too yeah and cooking it so right. this was a daily practice so right uh there he could he couldn't have been stuck there correct one of the just one of the parts he used to lie there with his arm bared. Whenever God bears his arm, look out. And so he was to show in front of this that God was at work with his arm bared. Well, the question, the question from Isaiah and the beautiful poetry of Moses and the song of Moses is who is the arm of the Lord? Yeah. Because really, in my translation, you know, mortal is an interesting word to, to categorize Ezekiel. Right. But in a lot of translations, it's son of man. Yeah, well, that's the and, literal Hebrew. And so when the son of man is the arm of the Lord, yeah. and we're not saying that Ezekiel is this one, but he's image bearing of Jesus. There you go. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your grace. Help us, we pray every day, just to uh, understand and to just connect with your word. Lord, deal with the iniquity in us, that yes. twisted part of our inside condition. Lord, deal with that. Help us to live it out right in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, thank you all for joining us today. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.